Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, bloggers around the world. We are, in fact, across multiple time zones today here on the Blogging Warfare Show. We have uh, myself here in Orlando, we have Robert Ryan over in Madrid, and we have our very special guest, Rebecca Radice, over in Los Angeles. So we are really excited to be able to talk today about how bloggers can really make their blog shine online. Rebecca is a fantastic resource on that topic with great expertise in social media strategy and in blogging and Pinterest and graphics creation and all manner of things. So uh, we've got lots of lots to cover today. So uh, Rob, why don't you say hi to uh, to our audience and then we'll get this uh, this party started. Absolutely rude not for me not to say hello to you all out there, the global audience, expanding week by week, fortnight by fortnight, and month by month. I'm really looking forward to this show. I'm looking forward to every show, but we have the one and only Rebecca Radis with us today. You may have seen her on Google+. Plus. She's acquired over 15 million views, a staggering 15 million views, and what we really want to know is how she acquired all those views. What knowledge does she have, and how can we extract it from her uh, in the nicest possible way, Rebecca? There will be no <laughs> tools of... Uh, of pain or anything like that here. All right, especially for a Saturday morning, which it is for me. So we'll go slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll uh, let yes, let, let's ease into this conversation a little bit, and we'll ask the uh, the softball question first, which is simply just uh, tell us your tell us your blogging story. Uh, tell us how you got started. Sure, absolutely. Well, uh, my blogging story started around 2005. Uh, when I started my first blog and you know it was just for me it was a way to express myself I was always a writer uh, really enjoyed it and I was uh, marketing my own business at that point and thought well you know what the heck I'll step into it see how it goes uh, and the bug bit me pretty quickly uh, and I was pretty pretty quick to see um, just the opportunity that uh, writing uh, to a much larger audience obviously provided. So uh, that evolved and I just continued uh, to expand into a couple of different territories um, and started several different blogs uh, with you know, kind of throughout the years 2007. Uh, 2009, and uh, yet maintained my RebeccaRadice.com, which I've had since the very beginning. Um, but it's been it's been an exciting journey. Uh, been very interesting to see how the medium obviously has evolved significantly different today than when I first stepped into it, uh, and exciting to see the opportunities now that it really provides to anybody, any business of any size. I think we've seen that it's really even the playing field for marketers you know both both big and small uh, from those small businesses to those entrepreneurs to those big brands uh, everybody can have a voice across the blogging sphere so that's kinda in a nutshell my story that's wonderful and uh, you uh, I know your focus is on marketing and on your main Rebecca Radice uh, website that's what it is uh, have you ever blogged about any other topics I have um, it, mostly in the the real estate industry. Um, I was within uh, from a marketing perspective that industry for gosh, 18, 19 years. So um, a lot of what I've written about and still write about today uh, for you know Neil Schaefer on maximize social business. I write uh, a monthly. Uh, real estate, which is focused uh, for the real estate industry, but all about social media. So I'm still writing about that for uh, other online publications like Inman News. Um, so I'm still out there within that vertical. Um, but for the most part, like I said, everything I talk about has that social media or blogging, content marketing, visual uh, marketing slant. That's wonderful. Rob, why don't you uh, dive in with your first question? Sure, and I'll try not to make it too difficult, but I have a little <laughs> list of questions and oh, typical please. Rob style. I'll probably look at the ones towards the bottom of it. And so, so let's let's throw this one at you. You say you started blogging in, in 05, but what would you say was your, your breakout moment? Because as I said, you've got 15 million views, but they probably started very slow, very slow, very slow, and then that old kind of hockey stick uh, sort of shape. Yeah. So what would you say was one of the catalysts for your, your success online. And if yes. you could identify one thing that, are, as I said, our global audience out there should kind of try to take away with them, what would you say it is? 
Uh, yeah, that's uh, and that's an excellent question because it, for bloggers, there are there are multiple pivotal points that I can look back at and say, boy, that was that was just critical. And a, a lot of them are trial and error. A lot of them are figuring out what works for your blog, what doesn't, uh, what is that content that really resonates, and so. For me, it was um, about, oh, I guess two and a half years ago, uh, I really made a conscious decision to uh, move away from speaking to everybody, which we all tend to do, uh, mm -hmm. and for me, it was more speaking to uh, everybody within the real estate industry about social media. Uh, and really zeroing in on my target market, which was and still is today, uh, entrepreneurs, business owners, those people that are out there um, that are probably managing a small team, um, maybe still dabbling within social media themselves, uh, and, and also running a blog, so creating content on a daily or uh, a weekly basis. And uh, when I took that step to really get inside that person's head, to really walk in their shoes on a daily basis and think about what problems can I solve for them? What challenges are they dealing with every single day? That was an enormous shift, both for me, um, in really comprehending and understanding what was going on. You know, what are they juggling on a daily basis, and 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 how can I help them? How can I help them wrangle that monster uh, that is content marketing? And uh, so for me, that that was the biggest, uh, I think, shift. And then the next big shift was exactly what we're talking about here today which was uh, the use of uh, visuals within uh, all of my marketing so it, you know really taking my offline marketing and marrying it with my online marketing and creating that consistent look and feel across everything uh, and with the ability to use social media uh, in the way that we can today just that visual impact uh, that made an enormous difference within my blog and within my content uh, as well. So I, those, I, I would say those were, that gives you two answers, but those were probably two of my biggest changes. And, and, and from those two answers, I've kind of, and I'm a devil for doing this, I've extracted a few points, and maybe I've got a counter question for you now, or a follow-up question, if, as you were. So you, I think you, you kind of said it's more niche focus is what was one of the main things that kind of helped you and then the kind of the banking term of KYC or, or know your customer so that you could really drill down and find out what their pain points are or whatever so that you can address their needs or concerns via your blog. But what sort of, again, for the global audience out there who are penning and scribing notes at a ridiculous rate, what could you say to them that they should try to do so they can try get into the mind of their, uh, of their potential customer? And then, yeah. again, how could they represent something visually to... Uh, to, to keep them happy. Yeah, and, and I really think that is probably one of the number one most critical pieces that we as bloggers miss. You know, for the most part, we all jumped into this medium uh, from, you know, just different areas, different aspects, but we weren't bloggers. We weren't doing that previously, uh, so we were kind of learning as we went. Um, and what we forgot was just go back to the basics, back to the basics of marketing, which is uh, get to know, get to know that potential customer. Know, um, y you know, for example, are you speaking to uh, women? Well, if you're speaking to women, who are those women? Are they moms? Or, and, and if they are moms, are they moms of teenagers or are they moms of toddlers? Because as you can imagine, the conversation you're going to have with a mom of a toddler is significantly different than the mom mm -hmm. of a teenager. Uh, so it's really drilling down into uh, who is your target market, who are you speaking to, who are you looking to have a conversation with on a daily basis, not talk at, uh, and what goes on within their world? Um, are, are, they, are they working moms? Um, are they juggling all of those things that a working mom is juggling? And then understanding what does their day look like? Um, what kind of challenges are they dealing with 
that your business, so be it a product, be it a service, whatever it is that you're offering, uh, what is it that you bring to the table and how, how do you make their life easier or how do you solve that problem? Um, how do you fix something for them and then how do you take all of that and translate it into content that really resonates with them because of course that's always a challenge, right? It's, it's trying to speak their language. It's trying mm -hmm. to not only understand uh, what they're dealing with but then taking all of your knowledge, all of your expertise, all of your experience and sharing that in a way uh, that's that's really understandable. Um, you know, I talk a lot about uh, it, it, extracting and, and, and pulling out all of that that jargon, that industry speak that we like to talk amongst each other. Um, but but putting your blogging knowledge, your expertise into a format that your target market is actually going to understand. So I think there's several pieces there. Um, I think it's. It's really getting crystal clear on who your market is because your market isn't everybody. Um, and if you say it is, then you're really, really, really missing a huge opportunity uh, to just get super niche specific and then, like I said, speak their language, uh, really uh, identify what it is that they're dealing with on a daily basis that you, you can help them with, um, you can provide solutions to. Oh my goodness, that's that's so true. I mean, I've heard I've heard so many people since I since I started uh, my business sit down and I ask them who their target market is, and they say, "Well, anybody, yeah. anybody can 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 benefit from my product or service." And I, I have to look at them and say, "Well, maybe that's partly true. Maybe anybody theoretically could benefit, but that's not who you're trying to reach. You have someone in mind, and it's it's definitely the same for bloggers. Uh, and I loved what you said about." trying to speak people's language and reach across boundaries uh, between your knowledge and their knowledge and, and just bridge that gap. And there's a tremendous power there, especially uh, for images. So let's, yeah. let's veer off into that topic. How can a business who's already very, very busy with trying to write things for their blog, how can they best integrate images into what they do? What's, what's the importance of that? And, uh, and where would you suggest people start as their, as their highest priority? Well, and obviously it's, it's taking a look at what do, you have, what do you have more of? Do you have more time or do you have more money? And what's important to you? Um, so obviously it's working to your highest and best. It's, it's focusing on uh, what are those sales opportunities, what are those daily to-dos, that move you closer towards, uh, you know, productivity, obviously within your bu business, but profitability. Um, so it could be a situation where uh, graphics, yes, um, are definitely going to be helpful to your business. You figured that out. You've identified that but you might need to give it away and there are plenty of great people out there uh, from graphic designers to virtual assistants um, that could really assist you but I think first and foremost you've got to figure out uh, what is your your brand look and feel have you figured out what your colors are what your font is what your message is um, are you fun and do you kind of give off that air in all of your content or are you far more serious um, you need to figure out uh, not only what your look and feel is, but what your brand message is. Uh, taking your mission, vision, and values and really extracting that uh, and figuring out what that looks like in a visual format. Because as you said, it, it, you know, it's such a, a powerful way for us to uh, gather, uh, you know, uh, or gain rather more attention um, because of just that, I think that ability for uh, images to capture our attention. Um, but it's also a great way to translate uh, all that you're doing within your business into a visual format. So I think first and foremost, you have to get crystal clear on uh, what it is you should be doing with your day and creating graphics. Is that something you have time for? Um, and if not, uh, figuring out who that person is that you can give it away to. It could be somebody on your team um, that is able to uh, take your vision uh, and kind of translate that into images. 
or it's hiring that right person. Um, but first of all, it's just really figuring out what is that going to look like for you uh, when when you think about your business. What do you see? What uh, what are those those colors? What's that that feeling? That emotion um, that you want people to take away every single time they see one of your images. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And by the way, there's a number of members of our audience who are expe expressing appreciation for your wonderful uh, graphics. Laura Williams is here to, to say hi. And uh, ba the basic blog tips uh, page is uh, saying that you do such a wonderful job of, uh, of speaking to people in their own language, and, and I think that that's mm -hmm. absolutely true. Um, well, thank so. you. And uh, audience, to the folks watching live, I want to make sure that, uh, that you know that we are here to take your questions as well. Rob and I have a whole bunch to throw at Rebecca, but, uh, but you are, are definitely welcome and more than welcome to throw things into the mix too. So toss those questions in the comment track or we'll Absolutely. put them up on screen. Bring them on. <laughs> and actually, well, you, you may regret that, uh, Rebecca, but anyway, we have one yeah. which has come in and it's from Jeff C. I'll see if I can pin it here. With yeah, basically, I got it. You got it. So how, his question is, how long did it take uh, Rebecca to come up with her own look and feel? And if I can, I'm just going to have a, a follow-on from that, which relates to what you spoke about just a second ago, and that was it's important to consider the, the colors, the font, and the message that you have. So which kind of dovetails with Jeff's question, and that my follow-on is, what should people consider when they're choosing their colors, their font, and their message? And what yeah. did you consider when you were choosing and coming up with your own look and feel? Oh, well, it, you know, to your initial question, it was definitely an evolution for me uh, in figuring out and really nailing down um, my look and feel. Now, my my colors, I went through a big blog redesign. Oh gosh, a couple of years ago, and so all of everything. Uh, that I was doing both in social media as well as my blog came from that. Um, my blog, if you're not familiar, my main color is orange. Uh, and orange has just always been one of my absolute favorite colors. It's very vibrant, it's exciting, it's energetic. Uh, it really spoke to me in a lot of different ways. And I had a lot of people push back on that and say, oh, you know, uh, orange is a little off-putting, it's, it's overwhelming, I don't care for it. And I thought, you know what? It represents me, it speaks to me, so you really have to figure out um, you, what are those colors that you feel best represent you, your personality, your business, how are they going to complement your writing style, uh, how are they going to complement that message that you're trying to get across every single day. Um, so I think it's first just figuring that out, figuring out what are those colors that speak to you. When I talk to clients, uh, it, you know, it's funny, everybody is just, it, it's so different from one person to the next, uh, what color resonates with them. And I, I would just share with you, don't get too caught up in um, you know, what, what your friends are saying. Um, certainly you want to take advice. Um, but you can start to go a little bit crazy with that too, where everybody has their own advice. And as I said, different colors speak to different people. Um, I, I've spent a lot of time analyzing color psychology. I think there's a lot to be said for that. Um, so I would certainly, if you're not familiar with color psychology and, and just the, the whole theory, color theory of uh, you know what, what inspires people to take action, what inspires people to buy, uh, I would definitely do a little bit of research on that if you're thinking about making a shift away from where you're at right now and maybe making a big decision uh, on your blog and, and moving away from your current color scheme, uh, start to take a look around too at some of your competition. Take a look at those blogs that you absolutely love uh, and figure out what do you love about it. Um, is it the clean design? Is it the overall look and feel? Is it the font? Uh, is it the way that they present their message? Is it the big graphics? Uh, there are so many different ways that you can present uh, your blog and your blog content. So I, I would just really think through a lot of different uh, pieces of that before you make a decision. But you know, back to mine, um, really my, my visuals on social media spawn from my blog, my blog uh, colors. Uh, I did a lot of playing around, kind of trial and error uh, as far as my fonts. 
um, spent a lot of time kind of split testing, figuring out you know what what fonts did better as far as performance. Um, and and one, I, I guess, quick note I would make there is don't get all fancy with your fonts. Um, I would say very very simple, very basic. Uh, that's where you start to get yourself into trouble. Is we've all seen them. Uh, the graphics that use those crazy fonts that are very difficult to read uh, and, and will cause people to kind of click away rather than click through. So uh, there's a lot of things you want to think through, but I think um, analysis and, and then really looking at what those top blogs are that you like or those top uh, visuals from some of your favorite bloggers. What is it that you like about them? How can you emulate that? How can you take that, transition that into your own business and make it your own? Absolutely. We've got another question here from, for you from the audience. Um, how do you decide when you're going to use Canva or services like that versus when you use Photoshop to make it from scratch? Well, I use, I use Photoshop for pretty much everything you see on my blog is, uh, is done in Photoshop. So uh, any of my, I guess, my images that go along with my blog posts so that you would see on Google Plus or over on Pinterest, those are all going to be done in Photoshop. And then I use Canva pretty much on a daily basis um, for anything from, I'll create a graphic, I'll, I'll pull out a quote, say, from one of my blog posts, and I'll turn it into uh, a social media tip. And I'll put that into different sizes, so unique sizes, which I've got uh, kind of my own little templates built out within Canva. And it just makes it very, very simple for either me or my virtual assistant to drop it down into uh, that template and turn it into a graphic that's perfectly sized either for Twitter or for you know Google Plus or for uh, Facebook, whatever it might be. So. It just depends, but for the most part, anything you see on my blog is going to be Photoshop. Uh, anything that you would see in my marketing materials, you know, for example, webinars or an ebook, anything like that, it's going to be Photoshop. Um, but Canva is absolutely my go-to tool on a daily basis uh, for making all of those social media uh, graphics. That it just it, it simplifies your world um, if you're spending time both blogging and on social media to have the ability to create those templates and if you have a team just be able to share those easily drop like I said you know some some context uh, content some text into those um, just you know maybe five minutes instead of the 30 minutes you might have spent in Photoshop mm -hmm. yes absolutely and uh, mentioning social media I definitely want to get into talking about Pinterest and, uh, and infographics a little bit uh, but first, I w wanted to ask you what you thought about bloggers sharing on Instagram, because while it's a wonderful visual tool, a great way to reach people, incredibly fun, you can't actually link to your blog directly from there. So what do you think are, at least not that I've, not that I've seen, a way to do no. it well? Um, what do you think about the, the pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses of that versus a platform like Pinterest, which has obvious strengths? Yeah, you know, I uh, I love it, um, but I think you have to find a balance because Instagram is it's really more about personal and social sharing um, rather than that business focused uh, mindset, which maybe you know Google Plus. Obviously, I think we're far more uh, business mindset as far as our social sharing, as far as our content. Um, so I think you have to find that balance. You have to figure out what your community is looking for, what kind of content. Um, but boy, I think it's a, a huge miss if you're not sharing your blog content over there because uh, it, it's definitely a way to raise awareness. Um, that's really what it's all about. It's letting people know that, hey, maybe they don't even know that you have a blog or maybe they don't follow you on a regular basis. So let them know in a very conversational way um, and, and somebody uh, obviously, I think we all know and love her here on Google Plus uh, is Jen Herman who does just a fabulous job 
with Instagram. So if you if you haven't circled her, definitely do that and go follow her on Instagram. But she uh, she does a fabulous job in using Instagram both personally and professionally. So you can certainly merge the two. Uh, I think it's just finding that that happy medium uh, for you. But I would highly suggest it. Just you know, take that image, take that graphic that you've created, share it over there on Instagram. Uh, and in a conversational way, let people know, hey, my latest blog post is up. Today we're talking about you know, whatever that might be, top ways to use Google Plus to engage your community. Um, and, and, and share that and then let them know. Uh, click the link right there within my, my bio in Instagram and click through and you'll find my latest blog post. So to your point, unfortunately no, um, and it's probably a good thing, otherwise we'd start to see a lot of spamming. Um, you, can't, you, you can't and you should not uh, drop your link right in there, but it's so simple. It's so simple for people just to click through to your, to your website as long as you've got it right there within your bio. I'm just after we got another question in, and uh, I'm a big fan of dovetailing things. So this kind of question also dovetails with a question that I have on my my list that I'm definitely going to get through. So this is from Tracy Wright, and it's I want to start a blog, and I hear the main thing to do uh, is to is just to do it for fun and don't worry about monetizing it right off the bat. Do you think that's true? You know, everybody has a different motivation. So yes, that, that could definitely be true. Not everybody is looking to monetize their blog. Uh, for a lot of people, it, it, you know, I think for a lot of bloggers, monetization is definitely at the top of their mind. And I would say, uh, if you're wanting to monetize, do it right out of the gate. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I made was uh, thinking that whole piece through down the road instead of doing it immediately because it's tough. It's tough to take people who are expecting everything for free and really helping them shift that mindset. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it, I think it's understanding what your motivation is. If you're just really looking to use it as a way to maybe communicate, uh, interact within your industry, you're never looking to monetize it, then by all means go have fun uh, and, and just do it. Um, but for those that are getting into blogging and thinking that uh, you want to make some money, you want to make a living off of this blog, then do it immediately. And speaking of making a living out of a blog, what are the key things that you do to to make a living out of it, or what would you recommend that people should do to try and monetize their blog? Is AdSense the, the, the route to go, or should people focus on their own expertise and try and market and sell that, their product using, or their services using the blog, or what's your secret formula? You know, I am not an AdSense girl, so I can't really speak to that real well. Um, I, mine has all been organic, building a list. Uh, really building a, a quality following. Um, to me, it was never about numbers. It was more about speaking to the exact people that needed my assistance. Um, and I think that's where we all uh, stumble a little bit when we first get started. You know, you, you think that you just need to acquire. You need to acquire this huge following or this huge list. Uh, and, and I'm a firm believer that it's more about quality than uh, quantity. You know whether you're you're talking about how many people you have in your list, whether you're talking about how many social media followers you have, um, whether you're talking about how many blog posts you're putting up. Um, really stay focused on the quality of your message, um, and, and ask yourself every single time, every single time you go to hit publish, am I offering value to my community? Because if you are, I guarantee. Uh, you're going to start to draw naturally those people to you uh, that need your help. Um, and so you, you just have to start speaking exactly to those people. And of course, this ties right back into what we talked initially, which is know who you're talking to. So know your target market. Really uh, understand that. Um, and then start putting yourself out there. Uh, you've got to make sure that you're consistent. Um, in, in that content that you're posting on your blog, so having an editorial calendar, really sticking with that, um, because the worst thing is uh, getting started, losing momentum, kind of losing steam, 
And then all of those efforts that you've put into your blog, all of a sudden are for naught because you're going to lose people. Um, those those people that you've kind of trained to, to come over to your blog and expect new and fresh content, the second that you start to lose momentum and they come to your blog and it's been weeks or a month or worse yet, a couple of months since you've posted your last blog post, uh, people are going to lose interest pretty quickly. So you've got to keep your, your efforts consistent and then also keep your share consistent so determine on social media how is that going to support you in getting your message out there how is that going to support you in monetizing your blog um, how is that going to support you in placing you in front of those exact right people so you you've really got to determine not only what are you talking about who are you talking to but how often are you going to do that uh, how consistent are you going to be in your posting and then what are uh, those what are those pillars or what social uh, media networks are going to support all that you're out there doing on your blog because obviously I am a firm supporter uh, in using social media to get your message out and that's really how I've grown my following uh, across the board. Um, that's where I saw exponential growth uh, was in my, my use of social media to support my blog. Mm -hmm. So kind of hand in hand. Yeah, for sure. And we still well, questions are pouring in out, but you take take it away, Carolyn. We are yes. Let's uh, let's get uh, these la these um, couple more aud uh, audience questions in here. Kristen Drysdale's wondering. Uh, she's read that infographics are dead, but she still really enjoys them. And uh, I have to admit, I'm in the same category. So, uh, what do you think are the pros and cons of uh, of infographics? Uh, what can they do for you? And uh, is there any validity to the uh, rumor of uh, the imminent demise of the infographic. <laughs> well, I think they're far from dead. Uh, I think if you're a blogger uh, and you're using social media to complement your blogging efforts, uh, they are a phenomenal resource. I think we see the amount of social shares that infographics receive. Now, of course, on the flip side, you see those just ugh, ugly, hard to read, uh, just a mess of, you know, uh, colors and fonts and, and those infographics that um, definitely should have never been created in the first place. So I guess the pros and cons would be a, an extremely well done infographic. Uh, it can be very informative. It can be uh, very impactful uh, both for your blog and getting your blog post uh, your points across. It can be a, just another great way to repurpose your content. That's really how I use them. I'll have uh, written a blog post or maybe have done you know something like this, a hangout, where uh, just a ton of great information and it's something that you can break down into uh, a nice looking infographic. So if, if you are graphically challenged and it's not something you could do, there are terrific people out there that you can hire. They don't have to be an enormous uh, cost either. So it's, it's just finding that, that person um, uh, that, that could help you put that together based off of that look and feel that you've already identified. Um, but no, I think they're far from dead. In fact, I think when they're used correctly, uh, they can be a, a phenomenal complement to everything else you're doing on your blog. Use, but perhaps don't overuse. <laughs> yeah, you, it, it, again, you know, every medium, uh, anything from video marketing to using slide share to using infographics all terrific ways to uh, to help just expand uh, all of the content there within your blog kind of expand you into uh, different visual mediums um, but yeah you don't you definitely don't want to overuse them it doesn't you don't want it to become uh, the basis or the crux of what you're sharing uh, because yes then I think you'll wear out your your community pretty quickly they'll get pretty tired of seeing that. Yes, we all have such short attention spans anyway. We all like to see new shiny objects. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Move on, next. <laughs> uh, Rob, do you want to read our last uh, audience question there? Sure, I'll just get it up on the screen. So this one comes in from Joanne Gagnon, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. Joanne. I have a long and checkered history of pronouncing names incorrectly. So if I've done that again, <laughs> I apologize. But the question is, I did a lot of WordPress and I need a change. What is the best platform to use? What about Blogger? 
Well, I, I love WordPress. Um, that would definitely be my number one recommendation. Um, it's, gosh, it's, it's so user friendly. Um, and the way that WordPress is built at this point, kind of out of the box, uh, most themes are optimized, ready to go. Uh, so I, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't stray away from it, especially if you've been with it for a while and you're comfortable. Mm. Right. I, suppose I, would, I would also agree. And just kind of one, I suppose, extra point on that. If you go to a platform like Blogger, then they, I believe, own your content as opposed to you if you're a self-hosted uh, blog. And that, if you're doing this for a few years, that could be a kind of key thing because if you're going to swap back and try to have it self-hosted and own your own stuff, that could be a little bit of a, a sticky wicket to unpick, you know? Ooh, that is a that is such a great point. And we talk a lot about that, both on the blogging side as well as with social media. And, you know, for me, it's all about owning your own content and, of mm -hmm. course, owning your own platform. So self-hosted, definitely the way to go. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, Laura Williams has a question here that I think is actually probably going to be a nice way to, uh, to wrap up our conversation. Uh, and... Uh, so let's see, let me put it up here. Uh, so Laura not only writes for herself and her own business, uh, but she writes for clients. Uh, this is true for me, and I think it's true for a lot of bloggers as well, because it's a good way to pick up some extra income. Uh, what's your biggest, bestest ever tip on, uh, on writing for how to keep the time you spend on each blog post reasonable, especially in this kind of era where we see uh, two you know, kind of two sides to the spectrum. You get these shorter blog posts, uh, the kind of, I guess, Seth Godin style that are very concise and quick to read, and these longer form articles that Google supposedly loves in terms of uh, SEO ranking opportunities. So what do you, what would, what would your uh, insights on that be? Mm. Mm. That's that's a tough one because there's so many different pieces to that. There's mm -hmm. so many different answers. Um, first of all, I'll go back to having an editorial calendar. So whether you're writing for you or for your clients, you need to put that editorial calendar together. You need to sit down, determine, uh, especially if you're working with clients, what marketing collateral do they have that you can repurpose, that you can take, that you can turn into blog posts because that's going to save you a lot of time. Look at their email marketing. Look at their news newsletters. You know, what have they created over the years that's fairly evergreen um, that you'd be able to take and, uh, and put, you know, just kind of put a new spin on to. Uh, but put that stuff into an editorial calendar so you really know every single day uh, where your time is going to be spent and then how much uh, time you're going to need to spend on that and Carolyn to your point it is kind of figuring out is that going to be you know a 500 word article is that going to be one of your epic you know 2,000 3,000 word articles are you going to fall somewhere in between um, so obviously that's going to a lot is going to depend on that but for me it is shutting down everything it's very difficult for me to put that writer hat on and be creative and kind of in that flow of writing if I have notifications popping up and my email popping up and just too many other things going on. So for me, it's getting into uh, the right locations, so a comfortable location where there's no distractions. Uh, for me, it's, it's writing when I'm most creative, which is in the morning for me, so it's really knowing uh, what time of day works best for you. Uh, for me, it's getting my cup of coffee, sitting down, sh just really keeping everything shut down, um, and then it's it's being uh, pretty specific, obviously, in uh, where you're headed with that article. So uh, really spelling out what point are you trying to get across. Uh, and then, and then, kind of working your way back into that. So, uh, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of different pieces. Um, but an editorial calendar keeps you focused and on track. Um, and then knowing yourself and really understanding uh, when when's the best time to write, uh, how you write your best. Uh, you know, what does that environment look like? Um, and and for me too, sometimes it's using. Uh, something like the Pomodoro technique, which I absolutely love, um, which if you're not familiar with it, look into that. Um, or it's using a timer uh, that just really keeps you, you know, to 30 minutes or to an hour, whatever you've mapped out uh, as the amount of time you're going to give yourself for that article. And there's a lot of times where I only have an hour to to write and I'm just 
you know, I'm not completely thrilled with where it ends. I'm just going to put that aside, move on to my next project, and then come back to it. Uh, because a second or even a third set of eyes or looking over that again, it's always a great idea as well because a lot of times we do kind of get into a creative rut and we hit kind of a, that proverbial brick wall. Uh, so sometimes, you know, don't, don't, don't be afraid to push it aside and move on to the next thing and then circle back around to it. Well, that's fantastic. I don't know about you, Rob, but I'm feeling pretty motivated. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm ready to write a blog post. <laughs> I'll probably do an infographic, yeah. and that's just what's going to happen. And well, I might even do some orange. Up. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's wrap this up and get to our uh, get back to our uh, our Word documents and our WordPress files. And, and uh, Rebecca, thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. Rob and I really have really enjoyed talking to you and picking your brain. <laughs> Oh, it was wonderful to be here. No, thank you both. Thank you so much. And where can people find you online, and why should they find you online? RebeccaRadice.com is where you can find me, and then at Rebecca Radice plus Rebecca Radice, you just type my name in, you will find me pretty much wherever you're hanging out. Um, I am a social media strategist and co-founder of uh, both a digital uh, boutique digital marketing agency as well as Imagine Wow, which is a digital marketing agency that caters to more the enterprise uh, level of clients. So no matter where you're at, uh, business size, we are here to help uh, from everything from social media strategy to your online marketing to your content marketing. Uh, really, my goal is to help you pull it all together and truly uh, monetize your efforts. And we are incredibly lucky to have gotten the chance to pick your brain today. Uh, once again, we're, we, we really appreciate it. Uh, we really appreciate everyone in the audience who came out and participated and tossed such great questions into the mix today. You make the conversation so much better. So Blocking Warfare will be back again in two weeks uh, with uh, our compatriot Wade Harmon, who I know was very sorry to miss today. Uh, but we will be, all three of us, back in the saddle in two weeks, and we look forward to joining you then. Bye-bye. Take, Take care. Bye-bye.